Good morning, saints. I greet you all in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We praise Him for this time and for now we are again to meet and hear His Word, to share and study His Word. Let us study His Word and know exactly what He wants us to do and and understand according to His Word. Word, according to his purpose, according to his will as well. And so uh, I'm reminded of someone that, um, the, 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 um, hearing his word and 40% reading his word for ourselves, and then 60% of it we must uh, uh, study the word of God. It is up to each and every one of us to take time and study the word of God. And so just praise God for this time in allowing us to study his word. We had been, uh, we have started uh, um, uh, studying the book of Revelation using Instagram. And so we received a, a request um, to read this book on Facebook as well. Over. And what we had learned, we had gone through six chapters of revelation we are reminded that revelation has 22 chapters and what god has tasked us to do is to study um book of revelation verse by verse until um chapter number 20 a.m the night begins in the jewish calendar Or they, and so right three hours had a meaning of the kinds of prayer that we can pray. And so, with the branches now, the network is doing its things when free just go on, um, uh, uh, reading, study the word of God. And so, now, with this time around 6 a.m., or the beginning of the, each day, uh, we learn with that it is a time of outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Because it's the beginning of the day, it is the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, which means God goes out, out his Holy Spirit and we pray for the will of God to take place in our day, for, for the will of God to take place, hallelujah, in the work of our hands, the will of God to take place, uh, uh, in our families, in our marriages, uh, the will of God is on earth as it is in heaven. We are reminded uh, whether the, when uh, uh, Jesus how to pray, he said, uh, he taught them to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done heaven and so at this time pray for the will of god to take place in our lives in as we start this study we pray that the will of god is done and the father we are just praying that your will is done we are praying that even as we start this study our minds are opened and so i understand that the word of God. May the Holy Spirit be poured into us even as we start the study in the mighty name of Jesus. May the Holy Spirit reveal the deep things of God. May the Holy Spirit reveal his, 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 his will for our life. May the great revelation that was revealed to God upon May we receive understanding even as we study the word of God in the mighty name of Jesus. Let the will of God take place in South Africa, the will of God in our continent, in our world, in our, in our families, in the work of our hands, in our workplaces. Even as people leave to go to the workplace, to go to schools. Uh, let the will of God take place, protected and provided for in the mighty name of Jesus. 
And so we just praise God that you were able um, to, to join us this morning, uh, even as we start this day and this time in Jesus' name. As we mentioned, uh, we are just going to uh, go over from Revelation chapter number one and chapter number six, and then we continue with uh, chapter chapter seven today in the mighty name of Jesus. So roughly chapter one in the book of Revelation is the introduction into the book of Revelation and speaks out seven churches. Now we learned that when we speak about the seven churches in Revelation chapter one, it speaks about the one church, the body of Christ, uh, the one body of Christ, the one church in the several ages that it will take a, it will go through so it's not seven different churches but it is the one church the one body of christ in the several stages uh, that it will go through uh, so it, it, the revelation chapter one speaks about uh, the revelation that was uh, the first revelation that was given to john uh, and the author of it who is christ jesus um, uh, the revelation given to christ jesus by god himself uh, who then reveals the revelation to john uh, and not only to john instructs to john to write down whatever he sees the revelation so that the whole church in all ages may be able to see this revelation and understand the things that are taking place the things that <clears throat> will take place until the end of the world and so so the book of Revelation speaks to the church. It speaks to the ministers of the church. It speaks to, to the church at large and, and tells us what, what things are taking place and what things are to come. It is necessary for us to learn and to study and to seek understanding uh, uh, concerning the book of Revelation because it is things that are sure to come and so god uh, says he will accomplish these things before the end of the world before the second coming of jesus christ and so it is addressed to the church and the ministers of the the, the word of god revelation chapter 2 contains the epistles to the church of ephesus smyrna Pergamos and Thyreta and it takes John to notice the commendable things that the church is doing and also the things that God has against the church. Chapter 3 speaks uh, has the epistles to the churches of Sardis, Philadelphia, Laodicea and it begins with Sardis in which Christ Jesus describes himself in, in ways that had not been heard before and speaks uh, about uh, what he is happy about concerning the church or the state of the church at that time and what he's unhappy about as well. Chapter 4 has an account of the second vision to John. It is an introduction to the sealed book plus the opening of it i'm reminded that it speaks and calls out uh, 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 to to whomever is able to open the sealed book and we find that is it's only the lamb of god who is christ jesus that is able to open to one uh, be able to come near to god in his glory as we read that be, before the throne of god came thunderings and lightnings which means it is a fearful sight but uh, it is only jesus christ uh, who is equal to god uh, that is able to come near god uh, and take the book uh, the sealed book uh, not only take the book uh, but open the book uh, not only open the book uh, but explain uh, the visions the prophecies uh, that are inside uh, the book uh, of uh, revelation uh, this is after the first vision um, which had the epistles uh, uh, of the seven churches um, in which uh, god uh, or jesus christ instructs his church uh, in the things that he wants 
done according to his way and according to his will. Chapter 5 holds the vision of the sealed book and the opening of the sealed book by Christ, which occasions the universal joy among all ranks and sorts of creatures in heaven. The book is described by the place where it was in the right hand of God, by the uncommon manner in which it is written. The book is written within and without, and by the seven seals it had in it and so it describes how jesus christ opened the book and the seven souls it was written inside and outside it was in a manner of a scroll as in in ezekiel written within and without and jesus christ is the only one that is able to 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 open the book, read it, and, and, and explain to the church the prophecies contained within the book. We are reminded that Jesus Christ is the great prophet. So when we need revelation, when we need prophecies, it is Christ Jesus that we need to go to. It is the word of God that we need to go to and consult and receive prophecies. We are not to look to other people, but we are to look to Christ Jesus himself. We are to look to the word of God and receive the prophecies that we need in our lives, in our ministries, in our families, in our, with our children. This is the book that contains, hallelujah, everything that we need. We know that Jesus Christ is the word himself. We read in the book of John, that Jesus Christ is at the beginning with, with God when we created everything in Genesis chapter number one that uh, Jesus Christ is the creator so God speaks and Jesus Christ uh, creates and so when we need to create even in our lives we speak a word we are, we are reminded that we are made in the image of and in the likeness of God. And so when Christ speaks, because we are made in the image and in the likeness, we look like God and we are like him him and so we speak things into our lives so whatever things that you want to see in your life this morning speak into being in the mighty name of Jesus with believing he says that by faith as small as a mustard seed but when we speak the word it shall be created and when we ask in the name of Jesus Christ who is seated at the right hand of God the Father because because he's seated there and he 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 is he is at the right hand of God he gives us whatever we are asking for revelation chapter 6 uh, contains the vision of the opening of six of the six seals of the sealed book by the lamb who is Christ Jesus and the events that follow after that revelation chapter 7 which is the chapter that we are going to be looking at today shows the the, the vision seen at the end of the sixth seal and at the opening of the seventh seal it expresses the security of the saints in the for in the only in the ages following the praises of angels and men and that account plus the happiness of all the people of god in the millennium state and so i'm just going to share some notes of things that we have learned and taken note of uh, so far and so i encourage you to also read the book of Revelation uh, for yourself and just go through it uh, uh, to, uh, with uh, from chapter number one until chapter number twenty two. So when we study uh, the book, you know exactly where we are. So a few notes that we have uh, learned is that the seven churches are the one church, the body of Christ in the apostolic age, which John lived to see until the end of the world in the successive generation so like we mentioned it is the one church the body of christ in the different uh, 
ages that it will go through, the different uh, 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 things that it will face uh, as it goes, as we go through the different ages. It is the seven churches. Uh, there are uh, different ages of the church of Christ, Jesus Christ, throughout every generation. What also we have learned is that God has us in his hands. We read that in his right hand, and where he seated at the throne on his throne firstly there are four beasts before his throne there are also 24 elders seated uh, uh, before his throne on the 24 seat and behind them at the outer part hallelujah of his throne uh, they are angels ministering angels uh, before the throne of god and so what we know uh, is that uh, god uh, has uh, wh when we read in chapter one that god has in his right hand uh, seven gold candlesticks which represent the church of jesus christ why is uh, the seven candlesticks we are reminded uh, in the in the old tabernacle or in the old uh, 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 temple that was built by hand we are reminded that inside the tabernacle there, there was the the golden candlestick with seven candle golden sticks that had to be lit day and night now why seven the seven golden candlestick stands for the seven churches or the seven different ages that the church will go through and so it represents the church god also has in his right hand uh, seven stars we read that the seven stars represent the ministers of the gospel of, of jesus christ which are called angels in the book of revelation so the ministers of the word of god are represented by the seven stars which are called angels of the church and the seven golden sticks are the church or the seven ages that the church will go through we also learn that uh, uh, in his right hand as well god holds the a book and what we have found is what the, the what what the book is that god is is holding in his right hand is the book of revelation itself and so god has the church in his right hand he has the ministers of his word in his right hand he also has the book of revelation in his right hand and so we find that this these are very important to God. What we find that his ministers, his church, and the book of Revelation are very are vital to God. And so uh, uh, we find that uh, he loves us that much that uh, uh, as his church, as his ministers, he has, his, he has us so close to him. He, we also find that, uh, like we mentioned, uh, the four beasts that are before God and also uh, the 24 elders. What does it mean? The four beasts. Uh, the four beasts stand for the ministers of the word of God. And so they are nearer to God, to the throne of God. And the 24 elders are the church of God in the different ages that uh, uh, the church goes through. And uh, uh, at the outer part of the, 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 the throne of God, we have the ministering angels of God, the Holy angels of God as well we find that the angels work together with the ministers of God they work together with the church of God they are sent by God to assist the ministers to assist the church and what we found is that the church the ministers of God worship God only and they do not worship the angels so we do not worship the angels we worship God himself only what we have also found through the reading of the word of God and studying 
the book of revelation is that god hates idolatry he he hates spiritual idolatry and so he calls us to 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 pray and worship him only and so we found if you find in the book of uh, exodus in the 10 commandments where he says i am your god who took you out of the the the, the land of slavery and so god has taken us off the of the land of slavery he's taken us out of sin he has washed us by his blood jesus christ has washed us and bought us with his precious blood and so calls us to worship him and him only so that we praise him and praise him only that we are called to worship him and serve him and so we've learned also that worshiping god we worship him by our our words and then we worship him by the lives that we live and so we worship him by our words and declare his holiness and say that he is holy we proclaim his holiness with our words not only that but we worship him with everything that we do we worship god with our lives we worship him with the work of our hands and so however we live around the communities that we live in we worship god by our lives how we carry ourselves the words that we speak and so god calls us to worship him in everything that we do we also learn that we not only read the word of god but we meditate on his word not only meditate but we live according to to his word on a daily basis so we learn that the book of revelation is a is like a love letter to the church of god i am reminded that when we are growing up we, when we were growing up the book of revelation seemed as if it's a scary book that we need to stay away from or because god will be judging and punishing us but no we find that that God he does everything to secure and 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 put us under his wing as his church with the people that he he judges are the wicked satan and sin and the world it are the ones that God judges but us as the church as as the ministers of his word he does everything to cover us under his wing and under his shadow we are protected and we learn that revelation is a love letter to the church of jesus christ he tells us in detail the things that were the things that are and the things that are to come the things that are sure to come and so we are reminded and god says in the in in chapter one that blessed is he who reads this book out loud who reads this book in his uh, in his own home blessed is that person that comes and takes time to read and under and seeks understanding of this book of revelation in his own home also in the church and blessed is that that person that that that, that teaches uh, this book and so we are reminded that we, we don't only read this book for ourselves but we we teach it also to the church and to our homes as well and god says we will be blessed when we do that and so we learn about the importance of reading and seeking the understanding of the revelation of this book because god has it in his right hand and uh, he wants us to understand this book uh, and so live according to his way according to his will in the mighty name of jesus and today we are reading and, and studying chapter number seven and so chapter seven 
contains a, a, a vision seen at the end of the sixth seal and at the opening of the seventh seal. It expresses the security of the saints in all ages following uh, the praises of the angels that we will hear and uh, the praises of the men unto God on their account plus the happiness of all the people of God in the millennium state. We learned that uh, uh, we after this, uh, Jesus Christ will come and take his church and rule with his church uh, firstly for a thousand years on the earth where there will be peace on earth where where satan and his demons will be bound in hades and after that he will be re released uh, 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 from hades and then uh, uh, he will be defeated with his angels and after that uh, we the church uh, will reign in the new jerusalem in heaven uh, with god by grace uh, of God and so that is the millennium stage so chapter number seven verse one so we'll be going verse by verse and uh, learning a few things uh, we encourage you to go to our website it is one kingdom dot weeks site dot com one kingdom dot weeks site Dot com. We have all of our videos there, our links as well to the different videos that we have uh, until chapter number six. We have notes as well that we load on a daily basis for the different chapters uh, which you can, uh, which we can download for free and at your leisure uh, uh, go through those notes and uh, study them and 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 do more research as well uh, for yourself and learn more uh, and teach us as well for the word of god says that we know in part and so whatever you have learned we welcome your comments as well and 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 teach us what god and uh, has has shown you the revelation that he has shown you concerning this book also uh, what you would want all of us and like all of us to learn after we have finished with the book of revelation we are here to learn and learn the word of god together so verse 1 chapter 7 of revelation says and after these things so it represents an intermediate space between the sixth and seventh seal so the sixth seal have been opened and now this is like a space or recess if you want before the seventh seal is opened as reaching from constantine to theodos for upon constantine's being a role emperor the church enjoyed great peace and tranquility after the demolition of heathen deities heathen worship and their magistrates in the roman empire a great number of god's elect were converted and sealed and so we have learned that uh, uh, idolatrous worship had been done away with at this time by the end of the opening of the sixth seal in the roman empire wherefore this refers to what should be uh, between the sixth and the seventh seal which brings on the seven trumpets and now before john sees uh, that seal opened a pause is made and this vision shows him to 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 fortify his mind and to show him also that god will take care of his church because uh, a great tribulation was to come now but god takes the time before the opening of the seventh seal to show john that the ministers of uh, god and the church will be secure it will be hidden uh, in god uh, before this great destruction takes place and it says i saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth holding the four winds of the earth that the wind should not blow on the earth nor the sea nor any trees and so it means that 
John saw four angels. Four angels are mentioned in allusion to the four spirits of heaven as in Zechariah chapter number 6 verse 5. Though the earth is not a square with corners but round, yet it is said that it has four winds of heaven. The earth is global. So with respect to the four points of heaven uh, and so which blow from each part of the earth from north, south, east, and west. This is to be understood as of good angels. So these were not diabolical angels. These were not uh, evil angels. These were good angels that John saw. Uh, either they were there to restrain uh, mischief from coming into the earth or to restrain false prophets or false doctrines from reaching the earth or rather they were there uh, to hold the storms of calamities they were that were to fall onto the earth verse 2 says and i saw another angel so he saw four angels and then another fifth angels he saw this is the uncreated angel that john saw and the uncreated angel is jesus christ himself equal to god and so he saw uh, the uh, the uncreated angel um, uh, who is jesus christ uh, for who but he jesus christ uh, uh, who could have the secret of the seal of heaven who is the angel of the great council and who could speak in such a manner an authoritative manner to the four angels saying Hurt not the earth, but he who is the head of all principalities and who should seal the servants of the Lord, uh, but he who has them in his right hand. So there's angels, this uncreated angel is Christ Jesus himself. And he says, ascending from the east and the east we know is uh, uh, from Judea, from Zion and uh, from where Christ Christ is the salvation and savior of Israel and whose name is the East as some render. He is the day spring from on high. He is the son of righteousness who rose from the East, the place of the rising sun. We know the sun rise from the East and brought life and who is life itself and brought light Jesus Christ is the light of the world and he is the joy of his people. And he says, having the seal of the living God, being the brightness of his father, the glory of God and the express image of God, uh, exactly like God and the character, he's the person of God. God himself um, having a testimony and authentic proof and a demonstration of his being the son of God. He is God himself. He is the mediator between God and man seated at the right hand of God the Father in heaven to which may be added that Christ has the spirit with the gifts and graces without measure. He says in his word that he pours out his great his grace on each morning so his grace is without measure by which the saints are sealed unto the day of redemption so we we receive his grace on a daily basis the elect are chosen by him and the book of life in which their names are written to eternal life in his keeping and therefore called the lamb books the lamb's book of life and he cried with a loud voice to the four angels this is jesus christ speaking and directing the four angels to show his power and authority over the angels they being his creatures and his ministers and to express his great concern for his people his care of them and affection for them 
and to signify the danger they were in though through the calamities that were coming that if they were not sealed and so jesus uh, instructs the angels in what they should do to the ministers to the church of jesus christ before these calamities uh, uh, come upon the earth that there's the saints the church should be sealed before these calamities fall on the earth. And it says, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea. They had a, a commission, these angels, from God to let loose the winds or to bring on wars, devastations, calamities, and plagues of various sorts upon the Roman Empire, which are now Christians, and the seat of the beast. Verse 3 of chapter, of chapter 7 says, saying, hurt not the earth, neither the sea nor the trees. That is, hurt it not, not yet, not as yet. For their commission was not a contradiction, nor taken away by Christ. By, but Christ is saying, hurt the, the earth not, not as yet. But at the appointed time, at the appointed time when Christ shall direct them to do it. Because it will, the, 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 the vials of God's wrath will be poured out to the Antichrist. Christ did this so that there might be an opportunity to show John what care would be taken to the church of Christ and the true servant of the living God. So this pause that we see between the sixth seal and the seventh seal is to show John the great care that God will take of, 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 the, of his servants of the church before these calamities take place on the earth and he says till we have sealed the servants of our god in their forehead so the servants of sin satan and the world are not mentioned here the care is not taken to them but care is taken to the servants of God the Father who serve him with grace in their heart from a principle of love. The sealing of them, the saints, the church of God, does not design the sealing of them with the seal of election because this was done in eternity before the foundations of the earth were laid nor the, with the seal of the Spirit which is common to all the saints uh, throughout all the ages but it speaks to or it denotes to the hiding or the concealing of the servants of God and the security of saints when uh, this calamity uh, shall take place in the earth the sealer uh, the God, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit who are all jointly uh, 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 concerned to the welfare of the church of Jesus Christ. Now the seal with which these are sealed is the seal of the living God, the foreknowledge of love care and power of God in the name of God, even Christ's father's name and their father's name in their foreheads, the new name of children of God by and under which they are known and preserved by. Verse 4. And I heard the number of them which were sealed therefore could be sure of the exact number so john heard the exact number expressed and told to him by jesus christ and there were sealed in hundred and forty and forty thousand being just twelve times twelve thousand and many denote they are being the true and genuine offspring of the 12 apostles of the Lamb, holding their doctrine as found in Revelation chapter 21, verse 
14, which reads, And the wall of the city had 12 foundation, foundation stones, and on them the 12 names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb, Christ, of all the tribes of the children of Israel. Not that these were uh, all Jews in a literal sense, for the time of their conversion in great numbers has not yet come. In all the saints within uh, these take uh, 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 these uh, one hundred and forty-four thousand uh, are those saints within the long tract of time. Even all that are the true uh, of God in Israel who are Jews inwardly. We know that we read in the word of God that we have been adopted and so now at the spiritual Israel. So these do not speak or denote to uh, the literal Jews, but uh, those that are true Israel inwardly, the spiritual Israel, which means those that, those that have received salvation, those that profess Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, those that have been washed by the blood of the Lamb, those that have served and are serving Jesus Christ as Lord and have chosen him and him only as their Lord and God and King and Messiah of every nation, of every kindred and tongue and people, uh, and is a certain and definite number of an uncertain and indefinite and indefinite number which only intends a large number of persons known only to God and Christ only. So the 144,000 are not a literal 144,000. It just means that John saw a large number of saints that he could not count. It was a large number of saints from every kindred, from every nation, from every part of the world. So the definite number of people, the definite number of saints, are known only to God and Christ himself. It is not a literal 144,000. Verse 5. Of the tribe of Judah were sealed 12,000. Judah is mentioned first because Christ sprang from that tribe and the pure worship of God was preserved in it. Its name signifies Praise God and shows that it, it becomes uh, uh, all the sealed ones, all true believers uh, become and true worshippers of God, true praisers of God. Of the tribe of Reuben were sealed 12,000. Reuben was Jacob's firstborn, uh, but uh, by his sin, he lost the honor. We know that uh, his sin where uh, he went to bed with his father's wife, he lost his place of being a firstborn. And uh, so he, le he lost his privilege as well. We know that uh, his birthright, the birthright of the firstborn, born son he received a double portion according to the old covenant according to the old testament and so reuben uh, lost his birthright uh, excuse me because uh, he he went to bed with his father's wife and therefore is mentioned after judah who prevailed uh, 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 above him and the rest of his brethren his name means uh, the son and shows that the son of God is to be looked unto for righteousness, life, and salvation by all that ex expects, ex ex expect to be saved. And of the tribe of Gad were sealed 12,000. His name Gad signifies a troop. And may denote that there would be a numerous company of saints and faithful witnesses during the time of sealing. Verse 6. And of the tribe of Esa were sealed 12,000 or Esha. 
here uh, signifies blessed as all the sealed ones are blessed with all uh, spiritual blessings of the tribe of Naphtali were sealed 12,000. The name of this tribe signifies wrestlings and may design the wrestlings of saints both with God in prayer and with their enemies, Satan, sin, and the world. Of the tribe of Manasseh were sealed 12,000. This word signifies forgetting and shows that the following the followers of Christ shall forget and must forget the things that are behind must forget sin their sinful nature lusts and pleasures their own people and their father's house and all their laborers and sufferings for the sake of Christ verse 7 and of the tribe of Simeon were sealed 12,000. The name of this tribe signifies hearing, and such an hearing is attended with obedience and denotes the spiritual practical hearing of the gospel by those who hear, understand, and believe and practice what they hear. Of the tribe of Levi were sealed 12,000. This name signifies joined and, and denotes that those sealed ones were only uh, not only joined one to another in love and holy fellowship to Christ and, uh, and only to Christ as well. And the tribe of Issachar were sealed 12,000. The interpretation of this name is higher or reward and may design those reward of grace which God has bestowed upon his faithful servant in times of tribulation. Verse 8. Of the tribe of Zebulun were sealed 12,000 which signifies dwelling and was the tribe in which Christ had his dwelling. Of the tribe of Joseph were sealed 12,000, whose name signifies adding, and may intend the additions both of numbers and of gifts and graces to the church of those times. Of the tribe of Benjamin were sealed 12,000. This word signifies the son of the right hand showing that these sealed ones are as a signet uh, to God uh, in his right hand and are as near and dear unto him as a man's right hand is to himself. The tribe of Dan uh, is not mentioned here and it may be because uh, of the apostasy of that tribe one of jeroboam's golden calves being set up there showing that god had no sealed ones there uh, from of that sort and instead of him levi is reckoned though the tribe uh, had no part in the division of the land of israel we are reminded when we read uh, in the book of numbers when the the the, the, the land was divided levi was not give was not given a portion but levi had to attend to god in the tabernacle in the tent yet they are mentioned here yet not then because then now had moved away from the worship of uh, god uh, only nor the name ephraim used here uh, it, it may be for the same reason uh, there have been a great defection in the tribe from the pure worship of god and instead of him the name of joseph appears verse 9 after this i beheld what follows is a distinct vision from the preceding one and is not a continuation of it but it, it, in respect uh, of the millennium state or a thousand years reign of christ with his saints on earth 
And the design of this vision is to show to John and every diligent observer that after the seventh seal is opened, the trumpets are blown and the vials poured out during which time there will be number sealed that uh, will profess Christ and at the close and winding up of all these things. In the days of the voice of the seventh angel, Christ will descend and all the saints with him. Their bodies will be raised and the living saints changed and made one general assembly. They will make one general assembly who are shown to John here to relieve his mind and support his spirit in a view of the calamities ushered in by the opening of the seventh seal. And lo, a great multitude which no man could number, which design all the elect of God in the new Jerusalem church state, the bride, the lamb's wife, or the new Jerusalem dis descending uh, from God out of heaven, these will appear to be a great multitude unnumbered. Of all nations, all kindreds and people and tongues, the gospel has been sent out into the world and to all the nations for the gathering of these saints, these persons, out of all kindreds, out of all nations. And when they are all gathered in, they will all meet together in the new Jerusalem, the church state, and make up the body here presented to view uh, to John. Stood before the throne and before the Lamb which means before the throne of God, this great multitude stood before the throne of God and of the Lamb uh, uh, in the midst of it. They were clothed with white robes, agreeable to their princely and priestly characters. In the thousand years reign, the saints will appear to be kings and priests, uh, clothed in white raiment, in white garments, and accordingly uh, clothed as such as kings and priests. And this may be expressive also of their entire freedom from sin, Satan, and the world. Excuse me. So before the throne of God, the elect, the saints uh, will be free from sin. They'll be free from Satan. They'll be free from uh, the world and uh, all its wickedness. And these robes may also design their shining robes of glory, uh, their immortality as they have received uh, their new bodies in heaven. For they will now be clothed upon with their new house from heaven, their new bodies and palms in their hands or branches of palm trees as an emblem of their eye uprightness and faithfulness which they had shown in the cause of Christ even unto death and we know that a palm tree stands uprightness up upright the palm tree being very upright upright tree and chiefly as an emblem of victory and triumph over their sin, Satan, uh, and the world, which they had been struggling, struggling with until uh, they are coming into heaven in a state of uh, imperfection, but we're now more than conquerors over them. The palm tree is well known to be a token of victory. We are reminded when our Lord Jesus Christ rode in triumph into Jerusalem, the people met him with branches of palm trees in their hands and, and cried Hosanna to him and laid down and threw the palm trees so that he could ride on top of them. Verse 10 and cried with a loud voice to show the strength of their affection and the greatness of their joy and how sensible they were of the favor they enjoyed because it is favor i'm reminded of a psalm that says that 
God's favor surrounds us as with a shield. And so we are shielded even as we, we, we walk on earth. We are shielded by God's favor. It is a favor of God that uh, we have and we are where we are. The things that we have, it is only by God's favor. It is only by his grace and his mercy that we have, that we are where we are saying salvation to our God which sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb. By salvation is meant not only temporal salvation and those many uh, deliverances which God had wrought for them and particularly in bringing them out of the great tribula tribulation but spiritual etern and eternal salvation that shall be enjoyed by the saints of God in heaven when they reign with Christ as the bride of Christ. Verse 11. And all the angels stood round about the throne. The holy angels is meant here, not the diabolical angels that fell from heaven, the third, not the third of angels that, that fell from heaven with Satan, but the holy angels that maintain their place before the throne of God that serve uh, uh, Jesus Christ and God uh, for his will the elect angels and about the elders and the four beasts, the four uh, uh, beasts uh, which we know now uh, are the ministers of God and the 24 uh, elders uh, which are the church of Jesus Christ uh, and fell before the throne on their faces uh, uh, to, to submit blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. Here a sevenfold praise is given to God uh, by the angels uh, as well as to the Lamb uh, is, is praised for his blessing and glory and wisdom, thanksgiving, honor, power, and might which he is full of. Verse 13. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, he was one of the uh, four and twenty elders, uh, one of the church members, uh, uh, the twenty-four elders before the throne of God uh, uh, that belonged to the church. Uh, uh, the word answered uh, in, in, in the book of Revelation uh, denotes to when uh, someone speaks, when uh, 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 nothing has been asked before. What are these which are arrayed in white robes? Uh, the, he asked this, he answered this to John to stir up uh, so that he, he notices these people as being a body of men that were worthy of uh, uh, observation uh, and uh, contemplation uh, and were worth his while uh, and to consider well uh, who they were and to take notice uh, of them also to try him whether he knew who they were verse 14 and i said unto him sir thou knowest john replied in a very humble modest and respectful manner to the elder calling him sir john confesses uh, his ignorance that uh, he does not know who these were and he said to me these are they which came out of uh, great tribulation, seeing this company designs all the elect of God that were, that are, or shall be in the world. And in general, all the afflictions, the reproaches, the persecutions, and many tribulations of all the saints in all ages that the saints shall face and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb, not the blood of 
bulls or the blood of goats that cannot and could not take away sin nor their own blood it is only the blood of jesus it is only by the blood of jesus that uh, uh, we can be washed that sin can be washed we are reminded that in the old tabernacle in the old testament uh, uh, sacrifices had to be made on a daily basis because the blood of bulls the blood of goats uh, cannot wash sin it only hid sin it is only the blood of jesus that can wash away our sins it is the blood of jesus christ that can consecrate as uh, uh, he says in his word uh, that our sins uh, he remembers uh, no more verse 15 therefore are they before the throne of god not because of their great tribulation but because they were brought through them and out of them by the grace and the power of God. It is by grace uh, that we are brought through. Uh, I'm reminded of Psalm 23 that says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow, of death we go through things we go through COVID-19 we go through tribulations we go through sicknesses with Christ uh, 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 carrying us by his power by his grace and it says and serve him day and night in his temple in a state there will be no material temple or place of worship because we know that in the new jerusalem jesus christ who is god is the temple himself there is no temple there to serve in we the saints will serve god they will worship god who is the temple there in the new Jerusalem in heaven uh, and worshiping him and uh, praising him. And there will not, it says day and night, but uh, it, there will be no day there. We read in the book of Revelation, there will be no night there. It will be a, a, a continual state uh, of uh, uh, living with God in his presence. And he that seated on the throne shall dwell among them. The throne of God shall be seen by the eyes of the saints. God will be in the midst of his people. Uh, 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 We know that uh, the Old Testament is a shadow of uh, heaven. The New Testament as well is a shadow of things to come. Verse 16, they shall hunger no more, nor thirst anymore, which means they shall hunger no more in a literal sense because uh, the saints will not have this carnal flesh, uh, but will have new spiritual bodies, uh, which also means in a spiritual sense. So the saints will not hunger or thirst for the word of God because the word of God, who is Christ Jesus himself, will be there, will be the tabernacle will be the temple in the midst of the saints of God neither shall the sunlight on them nor any heat which means the sun shall not burn the saints the literal sun which means also sin and Satan and the world will have no part with them verse 4 17 says for the lamb which is in the midst of the throne Being equal to him that sits upon the throne who is God himself shall feed them as a shepherd his flock. We read so that the lamb is the shepherd himself. In this case, the lamb is the shepherd himself. He shall be feeding the flock the saints himself who is the word himself he shall be visible to the saints he shall be king to the kings for we know that the saints shall be reigning as kings and priests god himself the lamb jesus christ shall be the king upon kings and shall lead them unto living fountains of water by water is meant the grace the love and the free favor of god in christ jesus that pure river of water of life that comes from jesus christ who is life himself and god shall wipe away all tear from the old tear 
from their eyes. The sense is that uh, uh, that which is now the occasion of tears will cease as the sin and corruption of God's people which now are the cause of many tears is also Satan's temptations, the hidings of God's face and the various afflictions of this state of this life and the persecutions of men. Uh, of the world there will be no more of either these there will be no more crying there all will be made to cease and in the room of them full of everlasting joy will and peace in heaven and so the saints in heaven shall be filled with peace they shall be filled with everlasting joy they will be filled with jubilation as we read in uh, in uh, Isaiah chapter number 35 uh, uh, verse 9 to 10 it reads uh, no lion will be there nor will any predatory animal come upon it they will not be found there but the redeemed will walk there verse 10 and the ransomed of the Lord will return and come to Zion with shouts of jubilation and everlasting joy will be upon their heads they will find joy and gladness and sorrow and singing will flee away sorrow and sighing will flee away in heaven they shall be in a state of joy and jubilation uh, there in heaven in the mighty name of jesus christ and so we bless god we thank him for his graces we thank him for for allowing us even today to to study his word and so tomorrow morning we shall be uh, going uh, over or studying chapter 8 and so we invite you to come and study with us uh, send us your comments uh, send us uh, 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 your, your messages uh, and we implore you to go to our website uh, week, uh, one kingdom dot website dot com uh, to receive uh, the notes uh, and the, the videos uh, uh, that we have recorded uh, uh, for uh, the previous um, chapters as well and so may god bless you abundantly even as you go about the day uh, 